I want to shed some light to the talking donkey in the Bible. I've heard so many critics on the internet talk about the talking donkey and they made fun of it because it's something that sounds out of the norm. Now, there was a question that was asked to believers of the Bible as to whether they believe the donkey actually talked. This is all a part of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, I'm sure that there's people in this time, in this day of apostasy, of unbelief, people that turned away from the faith or turned away from religion. I can see how this is impossible or hard to believe. But we act on faith every single day of our lives. Just getting out of bed is an act of faith. Sitting on your furniture is an act of faith because you do it without second thought. Believing, or better yet, knowing that that furniture is strong enough to hold you up. You exercise faith when you get inside your car, believing that you're going to be from point A to point B safely. You believe that by boarding an airplane, that plane will not fall out the sky. And you believe that you will reach your destination without problems. So we exercise faith every single day without second thought. But when it comes to things of the spirit, people find it difficult to believe or to accept it because they are trapped inside this gross material world. They're only accustomed to the things that's natural. Now, I'm going to read a portion of scripture. But before I read the scripture, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my new YouTube channel, Warrior Storm. I'm going to put the link in the description box. And feel free to go and subscribe to that channel. But the first scripture I like to read will be taken from 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. And it reads as follows. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, there is two worlds. There's the natural world and there's the spiritual world. There has to be a balance between the two. You can't be spiritual or better yet, you can't be all spiritual in a natural world because you'll be deemed as someone that's insane or that have some type of mental illness. Not everyone is equipped to understand the things of the spirit. So that's why we see so many people that would make fun of certain scriptures of the Bible and would even go as far as saying that they contradict themselves when in reality, it's just taken out of context. And there's even churches, preachers, preachers, and even so-called Christians that really don't believe what's written in the scripture. But the reason they laugh at this and make fun of it is because they are natural-minded people. These are people that follow the science and the research of men. Now, I there are black people that claim 
that the Bible was given by the white man or the scriptures was given by the white man, but yet everything that they study, even when they suggest you Google it, that's the white man's knowledge with the white man's definition speaking the white man's language. So what makes that different and unique from what's written in the Bible? Again, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. And see, that's why you find so many unbelievers are quick to laugh and scoff and make fun of things of the Bible. It says, they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. So he can read and study the Bible 24-7, 365 days of the year, and still not understand what's being written in that word. He may be able to repeat what he read, but when it comes to understanding the spirit of God or discerning the spirit of Yah, the Bible says neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, when we talk about faith, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please Yah. And to come to Yah, you must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Not just picking up the Bible or Googling scriptures and reading it without the understanding and without it being taught in context. But it says, without faith, it's impossible to please Yah. So you won't even get a response. So you could cry out to the Most High all night and all day and not get a response. Because the Most High hears not a sinner's prayer. And the only prayer that he hears from a sinner is the prayer of repentance, sincere repentance, spiritual repentance, not just saying, I'm sorry or forgive me, but yet your spirit has to bear witness to true repentance. Now, there's a scripture in the Bible. Matthews, the ninth chapter, reading from the 27th to the 29th verse, and it reads as follows. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. See, not only these two men, these two blind men, were following him, but they were crying out to him. And they sincerely asked him to have mercy on them. The 28th verse reads, And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. Now, he asked them a question. They came looking and asking and crying for help. But then Yeshua says, do you believe I'm able to do this? But they said unto him, yea, Lord. Then touch he their eyes, saying, according to your faith be it unto you. And those men receive their sight. Now the last verse I want to look at is talking about the topic at hand. The talking donkey. And that's taken from the book of Numbers. 
the 22nd chapter, reading from the 21st to the 31st verse. And it reads as follows. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the prince of Moab. But God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. See, this was displeasing to the Lord. He did something out of the Most High's will. And so what the Lord did was he sent an avenging angel after him. And see, this is where we find the natural and the spiritual, but yet we can be so natural that we can't see the spirit world, that we can't see the warnings of the Most High. And sometimes God would allow the creature, the donkey, to see it. Just like when he allowed Moses to see the burning bush. It got his attention. He saw a bush that was burning and that was not consuming. So he had to stop and take a look. And that's when the Most High was able to speak to him through the burning bush. But he had to first get his attention. And there's many times in life that the Most High is trying to get our attention, but our minds are in the natural. We're too, try we're too busy trying to focus on logic and reason and trying to make sense of what's, what's, what's occurring or what we're reading. And we miss the message and we're not able to see nor hear the message of the Most High. It says, And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. See, so the donkey was able to see danger ahead. He saw the angel with his sword drawn. And he turned out of the way. So Balaam decided to beat the donkey. People do that with their children. Sometimes the Most High speaks or works through your child. And because that child appears to be in opposition against you, instead of trying to find out the reason why that child is acting out or going out of the way, we're quick to lift our hands to those children. So that's what Balaam did with this donkey. The 24th verse says, But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyard, a wall being on his side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's feet or foot against the wall and he smote her again. See, Balaam wasn't able to see. He was natural minded. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass 
saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. He just laid down. And Balaam's anger was kindled. And he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. In other words, the Most High gave the donkey a voice to speak. Now people will ask, do you believe that a donkey can talk? And my answer would be, there is nothing too hard for Yah. I remember the first time I read this, it was different. Because in my lifetime, in my 29 years on this earth, I've never witnessed a talking donkey. I've heard a talking parakeet. I've heard birds that talk. And I've heard people train dogs. What appear to sound like they're talking. But I've never seen a talking donkey. But because of my level of faith, I believe that there's nothing too hard for God. And we must also take into account of this time period. Some people may think this is a parable. And they only try to see the message behind it. But we did not exist in that time period. This was a time period where the Most High spoke to man where he manifested his powers to man. And man was able to see things that we only hope and dream to see. Like Moses was able to speak to him as a man talks to a friend. He was able to go up into Mount Sinai. And God was able to pass by him and told him that you can see my backside, but you're not able to see my face because no one has ever seen my face and lived. And he told him to go behind the cleft of a rock. And he would pass by. And when he passed by, he declared his own greatness. This is what those of old was able to witness. They were able to witness what we perceive or look at as gods, great men, androgynous beings or androgynous demons, giants that existed in those days. They witnessed that. So to them, it's not impossible. It's a miracle of God. So it says, And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, He actually answered this thing. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm in a position where I'm riding a donkey and the donkey begin to start talking to me, I don't know if I'm if I'll talk back to him. See, I really don't know. And see, like I said, this was a different time period. And these men were used to seeing things that we look at as miracles. They these people were They've seen the workings of the Most High. And now the Most High reveals himself through his son, through the word. Not the man they call Jesus or Yeshua, but his words. That's how he reveals himself. Through spirit and through truth. But Balaam 
said unto the ass, because thou hast mocked me. I would there, I would there be, okay, let me read this right. Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand. For now, would I kill thee? So Balaam is telling the donkey that you mocked me, and if I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you. And the ass said to Balaam, Am not I thine ass? In other words, don't I belong to you? Upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do unto thee? And he said, Nay. In other words, I've been with you forever. Have I ever done this before? And Balaam said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. See, only the Most High is able to open your eyes to see the things of the Spirit. Until the Most High opens your eyes or grant you the gift of discernment, you would remain in your ignorance. You will continue to speak ignorance and unbelief. He would give you over to a reprobated mind that you would believe a lie rather than the truth. And we see that happening in many cases today. And it says, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. See, after the Most High opened the eyes of Balaam, now he's able to understand why his donkey was acting out. And the Most High had to get his attention. That was his way of getting his attention. So, I'm going to end this right now, and maybe I'll do a part two to this video. But we're living in a time of apostasy, of unbelief, of people walking away from the faith, turned away from the faith, and cursing God. So we can't really expect those people to overstand. Now, there are channels that have different religions or people with different faith come on and they debate. I personally wouldn't go on those channels because they're not serious. They make mockery of the truth. They make mockery of the belief of these people. And they really don't want to know the truth. They just want to prove you wrong. They're trying to get views. And they're making mockery of you, making fun of you. So that would be a waste of my time. So when it comes to someone asking, do you really believe that? Well, I have not seen anywhere that proved it wrong. Now, the burden of proof is on those that don't believe. The believer should not have to prove anything to anyone. See, because you can sit there and talk until you're blue in the face. That's casting your pearls before swine. And they would only turn and rend you. They would mock you. They would tease you. They're not serious. So when it comes to the talking donkey, just like the burning bush, sometimes God put things in our way to get our attention because he's trying to reveal himself. It's like the movie Color Purple. God is trying to tell you something, if you would, please. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe. Check out my Warrior Storm uh, channel and subscribe. Until next time, I'm fearless.